Hello students. Welcome back to my channel, The Divine Goddess of Economics. Today, I plan to explain to you what on earth the yield to maturity of a bond is, and how it differs from the coupon rate of a bond. Some human beings mistakenly think the coupon rate is what matters, when considering an investment in bonds, so I have titled this lecture It's the Yield to Maturity, not the coupon, stupid. If you are interested, please follow follow me. First, what on heaven and earth are bonds? Well, simply put, bonds are financial instruments providing coupons at regular intervals and repaying the principal at the time of maturity. But of course, there are some exceptions. Not all bonds pay coupons at regular intervals or repay the principal amount on the maturity date. Bond structures can also be customized to meet the needs of specific investors. But in general, it is safe to assume that bonds pay coupons regularly until the maturity date, on which the principal is also repaid. Let's look at the following example. Let's assume a bond with notional principal amount of $100, 5% coupon, with yearly payments, and maturity of two years. In this case, what would the cash flows from the bond look like? Well, it'd look like the following. In year one, it pays $5, which is a coupon amount. Then in year two, it pays $5, the coupon amount, along with $100, which is the principal amount. Simple isn't it? Now, let's look at another example. Okay, here is a bond with notional principal amount of $100, 7% coupon this time, with yearly payments, and maturity of three years. In this case, what would the cash flows from the bond look like? Well, in year one, it pays $7, the coupon amount. In year two again, it pays $7. Then in year three, it pays $7, along with $100, which is the principal amount. Again, very simple to understand, isn't it? What I would like to point out at this point is that all these cash flows are future cash flows. Future cash flows can always be discounted back to the present day, which would lead to the present value or the PV. Please refer to my previous lecture video in the finance category if you want to understand the basics of discounting and the present value. I won't get into details here, as it will be redundant. In fact, a bond price can be thought of as the present value of all of its future cash flows. In order to give you an idea, I will use the following example. Let's say a bond's notional is $100, with 5% coupon paid annually, with a maturity of two years. Additionally, let's say the bond price is $100, that is, currently priced at par. So, in this case, the future cash flows are as follows. In year one, it pays the coupon amount of $5 and in year two, it pays the coupon $5, along with its principal amount, $100. If we regard the bond price as the present value of all future cash flows from the bond, the PV equation can be written as the following. Price, which is the PV, equals $5 divided by 1 plus R, and $105 divided by 1 plus R squared. And what price did we assume? Well, we have assumed that the current price is at par, so the discounted future cash flows in this case would equal $100. Now, if you solve 4R, perhaps through trial and error, you will be able to see that it equals 5% in this case. And what is that discount rate R called? Well, as many of you may have already guessed, the R here is the yield to maturity of the bond. Just for your information, yield to maturity is often abbreviated as YTM, or is also called just the yield of a bond. Now, let's look at another example. Suppose the bond price and notional are both $100, with 7% coupon paid annually. If the maturity of this bond is three years, what would the future cash flows of the bond look like? Well, by now, it should be a no-brainer. In year one, it pays $7, in year two, another $7, and finally in year three, another $7, plus the principal amount of $100. So, the yield to maturity of the bond in this case is the discount rate that equates the present value of all future cash flows with the price of the bond, which is $100. If you solve for R through trial and error, you will see that R comes out to be exactly 7% in this case. This is the yield to maturity of the bond. You must have noticed that the yield to maturity of a bond come out the same as the coupon rate in our previous two examples. However, this would not hold true in every case. I would like to point out that you can safely assume the yield to maturity is exactly the same as the coupon rate, only in the cases where the compounding frequency used in discounting is consistent with the coupon payment frequency, 
and, where the bond is priced at par. In other cases, the equality condition above would not hold. So, be aware. So far, we have seen that, for a par price two-year bond, the coupon was 5%, and so was its yield to maturity. Also, for a par price three-year bond, the coupon of 7% translated to the yield to maturity of 7%. From these, although they are only limited examples, you can get a hunch that, YTM is a measure that, tells you how much return you can earn per annum, if you purchase the bond now, and hold it until maturity. Well, I'm glad to say that your hunch is correct. The concept of YTM is equivalent to what is called the internal rate of return, or IRR, on an investment. In this case, the investment is the bond, of course. So, you can simply think of YTM as the rate of return you can enjoy by purchasing a bond and holding it until maturity. Or, alternatively, the concept of YTM can be thought of as the discount rate that equates the bond's price with the present value of all of its future cash flows, as you have seen thus far. These two perspectives are, in fact, equivalent to each other. A little bit confusing at first, but not too difficult a concept, is it? Today, I have covered only the very basics of a bond, its cash flows, and the concept of YTM, or yield to maturity. I will cover more on the topic in my subsequent lecture, focusing on the cases where, the yield to maturity does not come out the same as the coupon rate. Also, I will teach you how to calculate them roughly in your head. So, please do visit my channel again if you are curious. And do not forget to recommend my channel to your friends and classmates, and to like and subscribe before you go. May God bless you all. The sexy goddess shall come back soon.